Hey, I'm Will Levise. He's Eric Claville. You tune into Levise and Claville. Give it to you straight the way it is from Black Male's perspective. We're going to get right to it. This show, Black Fatherhood, you know, one of my favorite holidays, Father's Day is coming up soon in June. And you can expect to hear speakers and writers reinforcing, you know, all kinds of negative stereotypes about Black fathers, like us being absent and being worthless and, and so forth and so on. So what we're going to do in this series and talking about Black fatherhood is dispelling a lot of those myths, a lot of those you know, raggedy stereotypes that yeah. are really uh, are destructive and, and, and designed to really break down the Black family and not have us to, to be all that we can be and realize who we are. And the fact, um, the truth of the matter is uh, Black fathers are actually uh, dispelling those stereotypes all of the time and actually achieving and being engaged with our our children uh, against the odds. And so, yes. again, with me being both a, a father of three and a grandpa, um, <laughs> I take being a father, a uh, Black father, very seriously. And so yeah. we are going to spend some time, again, connecting some real dots and giving some real information about what's going on in our uh, community. Right, Eric? Absolutely. You know, Will, you know, I, I'm really excited about this series, Black Fatherhood, because one of the most um, uh, exciting aspects of my life and one that I'm so humble and grateful to be, that's to be called father. I'm somebody's father, somebody's uh, dad, somebody's daddy. Right. Uh, and I, I, and God's blessed me with sons. You know, I, you know, of course, I believe that God gives everybody what they can handle. Right. And he gave me boys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, he gave me both. He gave me both. But I'll tell you that, that you know, the daughters is is more than a notion of blessing. You know, you 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 should every every man should have a daughter. I tell you, it will it will act definitely pull something out of you that you didn't realize was was there. But but yeah, but go ahead, bro. Yeah, well, look, I, I'll wait for my uh, daughter <laughs> and also my granddaughters. I'm going to talk to the wifey about that, man. See, what she can, <laughs> see if I can lobby you on your, uh, on your behalf. But, but Will, is, is being a father and is one of the greatest joys of my life. Absolutely, I, absolutely. I, I never forget the day that my wife uh, told me that she was, well, she was pregnant. You know, with, as we say, with child, you know, I was, I was elated. You know, from that day, my life changed. As a matter of fact, one of my best friends said, man, dad, I mean, he said, uh, Eric went from cool to dad in like one day, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I, every, you know, I was the, you know, as we say, the soccer dad, you know, I was the PTA uh, on the PTA as vice president. I was the homeroom dad. I was the one to getting all the boys together. Let's go, you know, to the park. Let's go to this museum. Let's go to this uh uh, fun, fun place to go to. Right, right. Go to this this speech, you know, this MLK Day celebration. Everything that I took my sons to, I always in the, asked them to invite their friends. Right, I, right. I, I loaded up the the minivan, or as I like to call it, the swagger wagon. You know, I loaded it up. You know, and we just rolled. We had fun. I made fatherhood fun, and I do miss some. I do miss some of those days. I will. I, I will be honest with you, as my son shaved more than me uh, these days, <laughs> um, I I do miss those days where my, my little boys are there and I, I kiss them and I pray for them before I leave, uh, to leave the house and go to work or whatever the case may be. And when I come That's back, really. you know, when I come back and they run to me and grab me on the legs and we go outside. Sometimes we throw a baseball. Sometimes we shoot some hoops. Sometimes we'll, we'll just do whatever, you know, we'll right, go right, right, ride yeah. the bike up in the neighborhood, you know, and it's those aspects of being a father that I take with me. And I'm just like, wow, what a blessing it is to be a father. And then they become teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> But no, but before that, I'll be. Mean, I, 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 I absolutely echo what you're saying, man. Uh, especially when you talked about um, encouraging your children to invite their friends. And one of the things that God has blessed me with, I remember uh, my sister telling me this that um, in observing how many of my 
children's friends to yeah. come by the house. And oftentimes, you know, some of the situations, maybe their father wasn't in their lives or there was other dysfunctions going on and they didn't have that closer relationship. And so my house oftentimes was that place where a lot of kids always were. Yeah. And so I have uh, was able to, you know, talk with them, share, impart wisdom. And, you know, as a father, a lot of times, you know, your own children see you as that's that's just dad and that constant yeah. <laughs> person that's there. And oftentimes that's is really there and getting on your nerves and really not allowing you to do things. But oftentimes when other children, they kind of see you from that different perspective, that village perspective. And sometimes when you as a fellow parent, you're able to reinforce maybe some things that they're hearing in their home, you give them a different model, something a, something else to compare to, yeah. to realize that their home situation may not be as bad as it is, or yeah. if it is a tough situation, that there is another way. There's another way of doing things. And I was just recently, I mean, it was just yesterday, man, I was with two of my, two of my other daughters, you know, Angela and Tony, who are both <laughs> very successful now. Angela, Tony's a... a a um a lawyer out in LA. Uh, Angela, her older sister, is an IT, you know, specialist in the DC area, you know, and they came by, you know, with their, you know, with their friends and stuff and visited me. And again, these are young ladies that were around my home, in my home. I actually got a chance to see, you know, grow up. And so it's a blessing, you know, too, that you can have that kind of effect on other people's children. A lot of my sons friends. I've been blessed that now they're older than ha and having sons. I'm thinking about one right now um, uh, that's out in Virginia. Um, and he just had a, he just had a son, you know, Dex. He just had a son. He's actually in, actually in Hampton. And I was talking to him, to him the other day and he was telling me about how, you know, some of the things that he saw in my household and, he, and when I would interact, when I would explain yeah. things, it helped him understand some of the things that his dad was saying to him that maybe he didn't like at that yeah. moment, you know, and now, but now as he's a father, um, he's able to understand and appreciate it. And he actually thanked me, you know, and he blessed me. He said, man, I never told you this pop. Cause he called me pop. And a lot of them would do that. He said, man, I never told you this, man, but I really appreciate you. You know, so it becomes a blessing, man. And the truth of the matter is, we're talking about this, and yes, we're tooting our own home, horns, but you know, there's a lot of brothers who are doing and have done the exact Absolutely. same thing, and we often do not get talked yeah. about. You hear Absolutely. about the negatives, you hear about the fathers that are not in the household, or the fathers that had some kind of dysfunction and is in prison or something to that effect. So we absolutely, in this series, want to celebrate yeah. those dads, the majority who are the majority in our community who are doing the right thing and trying to be do their best by their children every single Absolutely. day. What are some, know, of those, those, some of those topics that you, you were talking about we want to hear? Yeah, so as a matter of fact, I remember, you know, I grew up in the 80s. I'm an 80s baby, um, you know, born in the, in the 70s, but I grew up in the 80s. Right. And, um, you know, all of my friends, we all knew, you know, our friends, you know, it was a mom and dad, you know, dad and mom right. and dad. Right. And, and of course, even if there was a divorce or a separate, because back then people didn't divorce, they separated because <laughs> divorce was looked up on as being not a good thing, especially because a lot of families went to church. Uh, so you would separate for a little while. But, right. you know, everybody had their mom and dad, you know. So, you know, we live in a time period now where persons maybe may, may not know who their father is. But we grew up in that time where, like I said, Everybody that we knew knew who their mom and dad was. There may be some tragedy that took place. I know some people, right. uh, parents were lost in because we were coming out of the out of the '60s, where you know those individuals that those GIs that went over and right. of course had children before they went to the Vietnam. You know, my father was in the army at that time, and right. and you know they they ended up dying. You know, over there, so exactly. their children were left. You know, of course we grew up, but. You know, but they knew who their father was. It's not that he yeah. left, but he gave his life for his country. Uh, the and, and the other aspect about that is 
I talk about being the on the PT. I talk about being the soccer room dad. I mean, the, the soccer dad. I talk about being the dad that, you know, bring all the kids over to the house and let's go do this and let's go do that. Right. So I learned that from my father. Exactly. And the aspect that we're going to talk about in the Black Father series is our fathers. You know, my father is not only my greatest example, but he's also my greatest friend. Mm. You know, and, you know, persons say we're like twins. But I get a lot of, you know, he was, he, he was not, he, he was, he was a true man that, that not old only, school, old school. Oh, oh yeah, he was old school now. <laughs> <laughs> let's, look, let's make no mistake about that. Because I, I can hear you, I can hear you pause and hesitate. <laughs> you know, when you got out of line, you was having a little, little flashback. I know he was you know, old but, school. You know, but, 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 but Will, even at the same time, you know, my father was, one who I'm in the middle of seven children, right? Mm. So I'm in the middle of seven. Um, is I don't ever remember. We it's not like we didn't have anything to eat. We always had food. Always had clothes. Right. My father right. was a businessman. He had a job at the same time. We owned a child care center in our community for 21 years. Wow! Uh, right. uh, the Claville or Clayville daycare center. Uh, we had a pickup at the height of it. I think we had 75 kids, 65, 75 kids bus service, dropping kids off at school and stuff like that. Uh, and he ran it, you know, and that was his vision. That's what he wanted. He and my mother, who passed away, unfortunately, when we were in uh, a high school, and my yeah. father raised us, my brother and I, along with our twin sisters. That's right, that's uh, right. Five and six years old at that time before my father, God bless my father, with, uh, with, with our second mother. Uh, so, you know, he was there. Not one night did he not come home. Right. That's right. Yeah. I don't have I don't have those stories to tell. Uh, we were always in vacation. Bob's my mother ran vacation. Bob's school. So we were there. We were always at church every Sunday, day and night, <laughs> Friday and also <laughs> choir rehearsal in the middle of the week. Uh, my, my father was a deacon and he became an elder, uh, which he still is. Right. Uh, the church of God in Christ. And and but not only that, but he got up every day, went to work. And he not only did all of that, but he was our, my sister's PTA president at their wow. elementary school. He wow. was also the, the father who bought the snow cone machine and made snow cones or snowballs, you yeah. know, for, for us, the kids in the neighborhood. We did it, of course, we sold it at church and other events. But, you know, we broke out the snow cone uh, machine. Not only that, but he also was the one when we said, Dad, I want to do this. I want to go I want to be a debater, right? Yes. Yeah, um, you know, he when he didn't have the money to pay for the trip, I remember him getting off of work and going, and we went to go. Of course, we wanted to be with our dad all the time, so wherever he went, you know, we were like his shadows, my brother and I. Right. You know, he would go cut somebody's grass, and I'm just thinking we're just having our dad, but that was the money that he was do- getting wow. me to go on a debate trip. Wow. Not only that, but I, I wanted to be in the orchestra, play violin, which I did through elementary, middle, and high school, uh, the half of high school. And uh, he bought that instrument. They would come to those performances. We would go on those trips, uh, whether it be, you know, uh, to Chicago, or whether it be to Dallas, or whether right. it be to Colorado to go snow skiing. You know, we, he made sure that we had whatever we had. We were there, but not there in support. But also he was there as a mentor talking to me about life. He was a man. He was a man. He was a dad. Showing me the spiritual side. And and again, I looked at my father and I still look at him today. He he turns 80 this year. That's a blessing. Yeah. Still has his faculties as sharp as a tack, you know, the whole nine. And I look at him today and I looked at him then like I said, as being my greatest example of being a man, a great example of a man who, of how to love the Lord, a great example of a man who's faithful to his family, and a great example and my greatest friend. So the things that I do when people say, right. well, it's so wonderful what you do with your kids, I always say, well, he modeled it. I did it too. You had a great model. Yeah, I mean, I, I share that in the sense that, you know, my dad passed in 2018. He was 94. And unfortunately, my parents divorced when I was 12. But the thing, and I'm the youngest of six and all. And so I'm the youngest. And now everybody's almost just about out the house. And, you know, I'm 12. And 
his presence was absolutely missed not being in the house. But the thing about him is that he didn't disengage. He stayed involved. That's the key. You know, he continued to come and get me. He continued to show up at the sports events. He continued to show up at school. So he very much was a model that even uh, both of us, you know, and in, in your situation, unfortunately, losing your mom to death, they, they, their uh, marriage ending through the death of, of divorce. He did what many black men continue to do today, which is stay engaged with their children, regardless of what the situation is going on with the mama. And this is oftentimes something that is not really talked about. We continue to get just the negative narratives about fathers who are not involved. Now, let's be honest. There are a lot of fathers who are not involved. There are absolutely a lot of fathers who are deadbeats. They're absolutely. And I can't for the life of me understand how someone can have a child and know they have a child, right? And in, and someone in their right mind, if someone is, you know, on drugs or is something mental health or some other kind of situation going on that really incapacitates them or is a major barrier to being engaged, you can understand that. That does happen. That is a reality, you know. But for somebody to be aware, know you have a child and you're not going to be engaged with that child, that's, to me, that's reprehensible. Absolutely. And, that's, and I have no zero tolerance for that because what ends up happening is you now take that pain and transfer that pain on to a child who will eventually become an adult who has to deal with this kind of pain, this kind of wounding that is of no fault of their their own. And these are the kinds of things that we absolutely, um, you know, want to tackle. And, you know, one of my books that I've written is Dear Daughter. And where I give advice on love, pain, healing, um, marriage, it is like is really me talking to my daughter, but also talking to my sons and talking to pr- predominantly women who didn't have their fathers in their life, and kind of giving them that kind of advice, giving that kind of conversation that um, fathers give to daughters, but fathers also ought to be giving to their sons because. One of the other things that's often a misnomer is men tend to think, well, like in the case of a daughter, ah, she got the she got the mom and she don't really need me. No, buddy, absolutely she needs you because absolutely. just like Eric, just like you described how your father modeled manhood for you, modeled taking care of his family for you. I talk about how my dad did that for me. Your daughter needs to see you doing that as well, because it's going to impact the kind of decisions that she makes about the kind of man that she wants to have in her life. So we're going to talk about tackle all those kinds of all those kinds of issues, including how important it is to be a village and how important it is that you you can still father children who are not biologically your children. Right. You know, whether it's the friend that's your of your son or your daughter that's coming by the house, you need to model. You can still model fatherhood for children who are not biologically yours. Right. So, we'll, you know, you know, like I said, we've talked about the joys of fatherhood from our perspective. We're going to delve into it more. We've talked about our experience of experiencing fatherhood from our fathers and also father figures. And, you know, again, you talked about, uh, as we will expound upon, you know, the deadbeats, you know, mm-hmm. individuals who are not engaged with their children. Right. And that, that's an aspect. By choice. By choice. By choice. A- absolutely. And, and I think that's also, we look at how society, especially popular culture, uh, creates an environment or the, the, the illusion that this is something that's cool, you know, or uh, we create... Uh, these negative stereotypes of uh, baby mamas and things of that nature or oh, I take care of my kids, I send a check. You know, again, it's not about the money. It's not about the relationship that you had with the mother of those children, but it's about the children now. 
you know, I, I remember uh, being told, and this is very true when I say this, the moment that your child is born, that's when their life begins. And, and they say your life ends, but it's not that your life ends, but it's the pursuit of being selfish ends. When it's just you, you only think about yourself. You know, so being selfish is not a, that's not using a negative connotation. It's just reality. You know, you take into consideration what you want to eat. You take into consideration where you want to go, when you want to get up, and what you want to invest your time, your, your money, your ingenuity in. The moment that that child comes into this world, or even before, no more can you be selfish, but you have to be selfless. And that selflessness comes into effect because now I have to think about this phenomenal gift that only God can give. We can make a lot of things as men, but we cannot make children. That is a gift from God, a living soul, a living being that has the ability, the seed to, to become anything and even greater than us uh, that are already here. And, oh, and preaching and, now, huh? Hey, brother, look. <laughs> and, you know, when I talk about fatherhood, it's just not, I, I didn't read this from a book. Right? I didn't read this from a book. It's what I've experienced. It's what I've seen. It's what I desire for my not just myself, but my sons and my son's sons. Because now the selflessness is not, is not just for your, your children, but it's right. for your children and your children's children. Well, you, know, you also talked about, you know, when you say seed, it takes two to tango. And so one of the other things we absolutely have to talk about is how mothers play a role, particularly oftentimes when it comes to raising sons, is how mothers can play a role of helping that son and helping that father to reinforce fatherhood, or in the case of dysfunctional situations, a mother can play a negative role of, of, of causing, you know, blocking uh, opportunities for a father to really be um, that kind of impact on their child. And so these are things that are also you know, happening in the community that we've got to, we've got to address as well. So I, you know, again, I, I'm one that I don't pull any punches when it comes to men doing what they should be doing for their children. I pull no punches at all, but there's also an accountability on the side of women. And I know uh, when I think about my father and the kind of impact he had on me, I also have to give kudos to my mom as well, who despite her her anger, her frustration about their divorce in the marriage, she never pushed, positioned herself to block me from having a block her 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 ex-husband for having a relationship with his youngest child. And in fact, she oftentimes would say to me, hey, 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 be a man. Take that to your father. Go to your father. And so that signals something to me as a male child that, no, yeah, there's certain things, yeah, I could talk to my, my mom about, but there's still certain things that, you know, this is the this is the venue, this is the 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 area for, for my dad, for me to chop it up with my dad on. So, you know, kudos to the moms as well who understand that, particularly when it comes to raising uh, male children and don't position themselves as impediment to their uh, fathers having relationships with their children. Absolutely. And well, the, the last aspect we'll talk about when we talk about Black fatherhood is, as you mentioned, the ability not just to uh, uh, raise your children, but mentor others. But then lastly, we want to talk about repairing, coming back into the lives of your children. You know, um, I, I, I've heard that when we talk about um, Father's Day, Father's Day, in, in prisons, Father's Day is a time period where they have the, the, the greatest amount of cards left over. Mother's Day, they, they, they still, they can't have enough cards, you know, for Mother's Day. And again, right. to, you know, send thank you to the mothers. But can't have enough cards and, and no restaurant space. Plenty of restaurants, plenty of restaurant space for dads. 
<laughs> like, absolutely. Let me open the tables, you know. Not for mom. <laughs> you know, so so when when we look from that aspect, you know, we'll talk about how black families, black fathers can re-engage into the lives of their children. You know, I was watching uh, an episode of, of It's a Man's World. And, uh, of course, that's based upon the life uh, and the adventures of uh, Tamla Mann and her husband, uh, who, of course, became famous uh, from the Tyler Perry uh, uh, shows Meet the Browns. And, of course, they're, they were part of uh, uh, the, the singing group with, with Kirk Franklin and the family. Um, and one aspect of one show was that he met his father. And his father and his children never met them, met their grandfather. And they met in a restaurant and he talked about how, you know, it was hard, you know, uh, being apart, you know, from his, his father, the mother having to raise them uh, by herself and things of that nature. You know, and he's, he's, he's an old, old man. He's an older, older man. And, but he never disrespected him when he saw him. So hats off to um, him you know, Temple Man's husband when, with that particular episode. Now, of course, we know that a lot of this stuff is made for TV, but for that particular episode. And then bringing the grandfather to the house where the children had a chance to talk to him and he had a chance to talk to them. So that's an example, uh, Will, of how it's never too late to engage. Right, never too late, yeah. Never too late to engage your family because there's an aspect of fatherhood, like you said, just to know who your father is. That's right. Just to know, know, you know, where you come from. It's key to your identity. It's key to to how you see yourself moving in the world. And you see people who don't know that information. You see the struggles that it creates. So, you know, we shouldn't take these things uh, lightly at all. Absolutely. And we'll look, it's uh, I want to close this, this episode out. And of course, we're going to be talking about fatherhood Black Fatherhood, uh, all through the month of June. Right, looking forward to it. Man. You know, in ending our season one. And it's a it's a it's a it's a subject that's near and dear to our heart. But I want to close this out with three scriptures, if I can. You know, all right, all uh, right, Reverend. <laughs> uh Psalms 127, verse 4 through 5 tells us that as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, well, so are children of the youth. All right. Happy is the man that had his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gates. He says, as arrows in the hand of a mighty man, mm. so are children of the youth. You know, to be a skilled archer, mm. I don't know if you ever watch archery or or seen archery, but yes. that is that 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 is a skill. Where you're not just pointing, you know, a, a rifle, but you you're you not just spraying. That's precision, man. You that's focus. That's absolutely, purpose. absolutely. And 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 you think about where that archer, where he points that arrow, mm-hmm. you know, wherever he points it, but also how far he brings it back in is both the resistance. Okay, and okay, the okay. You preaching the that. So wherever you point that arrow, that's where it's going to go. Well, so now as a father. Mm-hmm. Whenever we point that arrow, yes, sir. Our children, yes, how sir. I we 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 point the velocity, how the velocity, back, and how and to keep in mind, you don't have to pull back too far. No, not too far, but you, you let it go just right. Mm. That's where our children. That is the responsibility of fatherhood. It also tells us in Proverbs thirteen and twenty two, a good man leaves an inheritance. To his children. Children's children. children. Amen. Well, what that tells me is that at that moment, this puts yes, our man. life goals, our life desires, our vision, our legacy, our everything that we're doing at the center of choosing how we spend our time, That's how right. we our money, where we put our children, the places that we take them, and the like. And, and it'll it, bear fruit. And it'll bear I'm good fruit. Absolutely. And then finally, I'd just like to end with this. Psalms 127 and 3, it simply says that children, low children, are an inheritance of the Lord. And the right. fruit of the womb is his reward. That's right. As fathers, we are given the 
phenomenal responsibility and privilege to handle God's inheritance. How beautiful is that? Amen, preacher. <laughs> oh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to chopping it up. Well, just like you, I mean, I, I think our listeners can can tell we love being fathers. Uh, you know, and there's no perfect scenario, but there is always the opportunity to do better the next day and to get it right. So for those of you, again, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of LaVie St. Coville as we introduce our series of Black Fatherhood. Again, follow us on our social media, like, share, follow, and also let us know what you think on our Facebook page and give us your comments. What are some of the topics that you want us to to discuss? What are some of the uh, comments that you have about this episode? Let us know and engage. So until next time, to us, that's the way it is. We'll see you.